of the leadership and the members of the Sugar Land congregation, I would like to welcome everyone, especially our guests, to the first night of the Sugar Land Church of Christ Gospel Revival Meeting. Our theme this year is Perceiving God's Presence in Perilous Times from the Book of Exodus. And each night we will have a topic supporting that overall theme. To those who are members of the Sugar Land Church of Christ, and members of the Lord's Church throughout the nation and the world, we are prayerful that you will be encouraged by the gospel message tonight from Evangelist Gerald Walker of the Maypole Avenue Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois, and that your faith will be strengthened in the Lord. To our guests, welcome again. We are delighted that you have tuned into our virtual revival. We are also prayerful that you will be spiritually enlightened by tonight's message and that the word of God will draw you closer to his will for your life. If you have any questions, please contact us via email at info at slcoc.org or you can call the church office at 281-561-0881 and someone will respond to your request. More importantly, if you are ever in our ever, we would love for you to come and worship with us. Please visit our website, www.slcoc.org, for more information, including worship and Bible study times. Let us go to God in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we approach your almighty throne of grace and mercy, Father, just thanking you for the opportunity to gather and hear another portion of your word and how we may apply it to our lives so that we may be better Christians and brighter lights in this dark world. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bless this gospel meeting and all who participate. Just bless us, Father, with the things that we stand in need of according to your holy and divine will. Forgive us where we have fallen short and continue to bless us with the strength and zeal to strive for that mark of a higher calling. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Let us all say, Amen. Oh Lord, I've come, I've come to receive, to receive my blessing. I'm patiently waiting. I'm waiting for the harvest for the harvest. Oh, I got the Hebrew, Hebrew, you live in one of that kind of thing. And it's life, oh my, since all this time, everybody sing, oh Lord, oh Lord, said I've come to receive, to receive, how long have you waited, oh Jesus, I'm waiting for the harvest, oh the Hebrew, the Hebrew is living that kind of thing. My blessing shall and it is mine. Oh, oh, mine. Send us all this time. Said I'm standing, I'm in on God's promise. I'm insisting on your word. Said everything. That I speak, I said I know you give it to me. It's the Father who gives the pleasure. That the kingdom is mine, oh, it is mine, oh, mine. Said it's all it's mine. Where you sing, oh Lord, oh Lord. Said I come to receive, to receive. How long have you been waiting? Waiting for the harvest. Oh, I got the Hebrew, the Hebrew to live in that kind of thing. My blessed share of mine. Oh, my. Said it's all this time. Well, said I believe in him. Hungry face. 
me. He promised me a long time ago. I know I'm gonna get it because the Bible is in the soul. It's the Father's real pleasure that the kingdom here I Oh, it is mine. Oh, mine. Will you sing, oh Lord, oh Lord, said I'm come to receive, how long have you been waiting, 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 waiting for all this, oh, I got the Hebrew, the Hebrew, that kind of thing, I got the Hebrew, Is mine. Oh, mine. Said it's all is mine. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get mine. Gonna get it. Gonna get mine. Said I'm gonna get mine. Gonna get. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get mine. Is mine. Is mine. Said it's mine. Lord, oh, the king, the king. Said, I've come to receive, to receive. How long have you been waiting? Oh, oh, I got the Hebrew, the Hebrew. That kind of thing, there's no Gerald Walker of the Maypole Avenue Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois, where he has been serving since 2017. Brother Walker is the oldest of five children born to Edward and R. Lee Walker. A native Chicagoan, he attended Elmhurst University where he received his Bachelor's of Science degree in business and economics. For over 30 years, he worked as a field examiner for banks and financial institutions in Chicago. Brother Walker was baptized into Christ in June of 1975 and has been preaching since 1979, laboring at the 87th Street Church of Christ in Chicago and the Harvey Church of Christ prior to accepting the call to the Maypole Avenue Church of Christ. He has preached across the Brotherhood, held gospel meetings, and spoken on local, regional, and national lectureships, as well as facilitated numerous workshops his greatest joy is teaching Bible classes. He is also a former member of the United Acapella Chorus and the United Quintet of Chicago. 
Brother Walker has been married to the former Deborah Jones since July 1976. He and Sister Walker have one son, Gerald Jason Walker, who serves as the music minister of the King's Church of Christ in Brooklyn, New York. Greetings. We come to you now from the Maple Avenue Church of Christ on the mighty west side of Chicago, Illinois. I'm Brother Gerald Walker, and I'm privileged to serve as the minister and evangelist at this congregation. It's such an honor to be asked to participate in this sermon series. I'm grateful to your minister, Dr. Lewis Parker, and applaud his 
foresight in presenting this series to encourage and enlighten and edify the body there in Sugarland, Texas. I pray that my small contribution will do for you what God intends. I've been given the subject, God's providence in peril. The text that I invite your attention to will be found in Exodus chapter two, verses one through 10. I will be reading from the New International Version, and if you go there, you will find these words. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to go get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. God's providence in peril. The passage is taken from Exodus chapter two, but we need to look at Exodus chapter one, verse 22, where Pharaoh gave this edict. And Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive. Perils, perils are surprises to us, but not surprising to God. And since he cares for us and how we fare, we have scriptural evidence that he is always prepared to provide for whatever comes our way. The sad reality is we don't always see God's providence in peril. It's easy to focus on the problem and not the problem solver. It's easy to focus on the dilemma and miss the deliverance. Sometimes we miss the Christ because we're focused on the crises. Remember Peter walking on water? When he caught sight of the wind and the waves, he lost sight of the fact that he was in fact walking on the water. When we are beset by cares, we forget to cast all our cares upon him. When, we, when our yoke is heavy, we forget that Jesus says, take mine, for my yoke is easy. Someone wrote, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. The king's edict brought perilous times to the Hebrews. They came to Egypt as guests, but now find themselves oppressed, abused, hated, 
and feared all at the same time through no fault of their own. Through no fault of their own, Pharaoh hated the Hebrews. Through no fault of their own, boy babies were to be cast into the Nile. Through no fault of their own, only girl babies were allowed to live. Just as he prepared for Israel's deliverance before it was time, he has prepared for our deliverance in our time of peril. This pandemic shook up the world, but it didn't shake up God. He has provided for us a message to preach during the pandemic about the pandemic and in spite of the pandemic that Jesus Christ is still Lord and that God's will must be done. What some call coincidence, the Bible calls providence. Listen to the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God knows the end before it arrives. The history of God, the resume of God, the tendencies of God, the modus operandi of God and the ways of God assure us, not suggest to us, but assure us not probably, not possibly, not maybe, but assure us that God has provided for our perilous periods. Time after time, episode after episode, peril after peril, we see God's provision on the pages of inspiration. David, as a youth, kills a lion and a bear protecting his father's sheep and he's being prepared and provided by God to kill Goliath. Esther was prepared and provided by God to deliver her people in Esther chapter 4 verse 14. Joseph was prepared and provided by God to deliver Israel from the famine in Canaan. When Jonah rebelled. God had already prepared and provided a fish to change his mind. Jonah 1, 7. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The evidence is overwhelming that God makes provision prior to our perils. His provision is proof of his power. He sees our trouble before our trouble sees us. And he's prepared when it comes. So how can I be prepared when peril arrives? How can I draw on the history of the Almighty to face my problems, perils, and pitfall? Just look at the evidence. God told Moses in Exodus chapter 12 to prepare a lamb to be eaten before the deliverance. Verse 24 says, And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to the end and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye come into the land which the Lord will give you according as he has promised that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshiped. God told Moses to do this before he had even delivered them. He told them that they were going into a land, that they were going to have to remember what he had done. He knew they would come out of Egypt. So he made provision for it to be Remembered, he knew they would come into a land promised to their fathers. So he made provision for it to be remembered. 
He knew their sons would ask about its significance, so he provided for it to be remembered. Fast forward to the New Testament. Luke chapter 22, verses 19 and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Jesus knew he was about to die. So he made provision for it to be remembered. He knew the church was to be built. Because of his sacrifice. So he made provision for this to be remembered. Time after time. Episode after episode. God has shown us in scripture. That he is always prepared for our perils. And has already made provision for our problems. Somewhere. God is saying. I've shown you what I can do. I've shown you what I will do. I keep my word because I care about my people. Now, I've got something for you to do. I need you to trust in me. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Oh, if you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. This, this awesome knowledge is pertinent today. When my perils and problems and predicaments arise, I need only to trust in him. And I can do this if I remember his provision, if I rehearse his provision, and if I rely on his provision. I got to remember God's provision. If I forget, he'll have to prove himself to me all over again. Most of the time, when God's provision is remembered, we only remember the deliverance. When we think of how broke we were, we only focus on, but we ate every day. Or the lights stayed on. I was lost, but now I'm found. I'm blind, but now I see. The focus on being found and seeing. I believe that part is important also. But if I wasn't in big trouble, the provision can't be big. My friend came and picked me up. It's not as big a deal as I was stranded and cold and afraid. And my friend came and picked me up. The greater the peril, the greater the deliverance. Jesus grabbing Peter's hand to help him up off the ground is one thing. But when he thinks about the fact that he was sinking beneath the waves and his life was passing before him and Jesus grabbed his hand and pulled him out, now it's a greater deliverance. When I remember God's provision, I can't forget how sad I was before and how glad I was after. I can't forget how worried I was before, how I couldn't sleep before, how I couldn't think before, how nothing else was on the agenda until he provided. Church, when this pandemic is over, don't forget how worried you were. Don't forget how inconvenienced you were. Don't forget how confused you were. Don't forget all the mixed signals you received. Don't forget how rebellious some folk were. And don't forget you couldn't even come to church before the Lord delivered you. When troubles come, it's easy to forget how much trouble we were in. Because when we remember how much trouble we were in, then it magnifies the deliverance of God. Know this. Satan wants you to forget. He tempted Jesus. Try to make him forget why he came. He tempted Peter. Try to make him forget that he was walking on the water. He tempted David. Try to make him forget 
that his victories did not come from the number of troops he had, but because God was on his side. Remember what he's done. Remember that he loves you because Satan's objective is to make us forget the God we serve and to take our eyes off of him. Remember that he's faithful. Remember the things he promised. Remember who he is. Remember that I'm his child. Not only do I need to remember his provision, I need to rehearse his provision. You need to re rehearse the things that you remember. See, details are highlighted when you rehearse to yourself the deliverance brought in your last trial. You remember the pain you felt. You remember the rejection you experienced. You remember the tears you shed. And you remember the hopelessness that overwhelmed you when you rehearse the deliverance. Because of what he's done in my lean times. When I don't seem to have enough, I need to rehearse what he's done before. This helps me to know he'll do it again. And if he doesn't, he's still able. Then when I've rehearsed it to myself, I can encourage someone else. When you rehearse it to someone else, it encourages them. It lets them know that if he did it for you, he'll do it for me. When you rehearse it to someone else, God gets greater glory because now both of you know that he's an on time God. I got to tell somebody, I just can't keep it to myself. Don't you know all these trials in scripture are rehearsed for our benefit to let us know who it is we serve? When I refer, when I rehearse my deliverance and God's provision, Somebody else may say, if he provided for him, he'll provide for me. My trust in him may cause somebody else to trust in him. My story might help somebody else with their story. Oh, I got to tell somebody. I got to tell of the Savior. I've got to tell it wherever I go. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Paul writes, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end amen Paul bowed his knees in prayer because now that the Gentiles have been brought into the body of Christ by the plan of God he wants them to receive the things that they need to stay strong but look at this doxology he could have said now unto God but he didn't he could have said now unto the creator of all things but he didn't he could have said now unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ but he didn't he says, now unto him who is able. I'm glad he's my provider because he's able. He's able to exceed abundantly above all. I cannot find room for any more superlatives. He not only exceeds, but he exceeds abundantly. He not only exceeds abundantly, but he exceeds abundantly above. He not only sees abundantly above, but he sees abundantly above all, not just what we ask, but what we ask or think. He even exceeds in providing things we didn't even think of. We didn't think of forgiveness of sins, but he did. We didn't think of the spirit to guide us, but he did. We didn't think of a home eternal in the heavens, but he did. We didn't think of the need to vanquish Satan, to do away with death, the, the need for prayer, the need for his written word or examples of his power and his love. But when we got here, God had already provided. So not only do we need to remember his provision, not only do we need to rehearse his provisions, finally we need to rely 
on his provisions. Our goal ought to be to have a faith like Abraham's so I can rely on God to provide in my perils. When you look at the story of Abraham, as he goes to sacrifice his son, Isaac, I do not believe that God would ask me to sacrifice my only son. But I must believe that the same God that protected Abraham and Isaac will protect me. The same God that provided for them will provide for me. Therefore, I must believe if I ever needed that kind of faith, I'll know where to go because God will provide. Briefly, Genesis chapter 22, verse number six and seven. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb? For a burnt offering. Now this is a very important question. And most times when we look at this episode. We've looked at this passage from Abraham's perspective. But what about Isaac's viewpoint? We're going to sacrifice to God. But we ain't got no sacrifice. Maybe dad will pick one up on the way. Maybe one is waiting for us and I just don't know about it. Every other time we went to sacrifice, we had wood, fire, and a lamb. I see the fire and I see the wood, but no lamb. I don't know what that is going to do, but he's in charge, so I'll just have to follow his lead. There's a lesson right there, y'all. We don't know what our father is going to do, but he's in charge and we just have to follow his lead. Somewhere I read, your way is not my way. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And then in verse number eight, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Don't you know the answer is as important as the question? I didn't bring one, but God will provide. I was actually told to sacrifice you, but I believe that God will provide. I want you to know, Isaac, what I have learned, and that is that God will provide. It's critical for every parent to teach their children that all our plans won't work out and that you're going to have to rely on God. God intends for us to have faith and to teach our children to have faith. Help them to know that whatever the problem, whatever the time, whatever the place, whenever you call, God will provide. <laughs> Things look dark for Isaac, but he trusted his father. He was about to lose his life, but he trusted his father. When you're up against the wall and things look bad, trust your father. When you can't see the way out and don't know what to do, trust your father. I can see the faith in Isaac that his daddy taught him. God will provide. I'm tying you up. I'm placing you on the altar, but I know that God will provide. I'm raising my knife to take your life, but I believe in my soul that God will provide. We know the story. The angel of the Lord stops him. Says, Abraham, Abraham, because of what I've seen, I know you fear God. Not because of what you said, but because of what you did. Even though Abraham was about to sacrifice to God that which God requested, that would not have pleased God as much as the willingness to obey him under any circumstances. God doesn't know how much you rely on him by your words, but he knows it by your action. 
Relying on him honors God. Relying on him gives God glory. I don't know how Abraham did it, but he honored God. There were no lengths he would not go to to obey God, even if it meant killing the son that he had waited so long to receive. Verse 13, Genesis 22. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, be behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Verse 14, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So Abraham sees the ram in the bush, offers it up to God instead of his son. His faith has been rewarded. He doesn't have to fear anymore. He doesn't have to wonder anymore. Whatever God says do, he'll find Abraham doing it. But look at them coming down out of the mountain. Can't you just hear their conversation? Can't you hear Isaac say, it looked pretty scary back there, Dad. And here Abraham said, I told you, son, Jehovah Jireh. And then Isaac said, yep, Jehovah Jireh. He could have called God anything. He could have said Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He could have called him Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. He could have said Jehovah Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. Or he could have said Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. He could have said Jehovah Siddiquanu, the Lord, our righteousness. Or Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is omnipresent. But he called it Jehovah Jireh. Now, when I sit down to eat, Jehovah Jireh. When I make that monthly payment, Jehovah Jireh. When I stop at the gas station, Jehovah Jireh. When I go to the closet and stand there and survey to determine what I'm going to wear, Jehovah Jireh. When I look in the refrigerator and try to figure out what I want to eat, uh, Jehovah Jireh. When I put the keys in the house and open the door and come inside, Jehovah Jireh. When I go to the store and pay for something, when I have occasion to bless somebody else, it's because God blessed me. When I lay my head down at night, when I open my eyes in the morning, when I talk to my child, when I see my aged mother, when I talk to my siblings, Jehovah Jireh. Even when I pull the garbage can out the curb for pickup, probably means I ate well last week. So I can be like Isaac, Jehovah Jireh. Every time I do, my faith should get stronger. If they were told to do it again, this time it would be Isaac saying, don't worry, Dad, Jehovah Jireh. We too have a reason to say Jehovah Jireh. God saw what was needed by a world under attack. He saw that Satan was ruining his children. He saw that we didn't have the strength nor the knowledge to avoid him or defeat him. So he provided what we needed. We needed a savior. We needed a a substitute we needed an example we needed help and we needed healing he saw us drifting farther and further away from him we needed a guide he saw us in the dark we needed some light he saw us in trouble we needed to be rescued so he sent his son we know not only from evidence but from experience that God provides for our peril. We just have to remember it, rehearse it, and rely upon it. Because even in our perils, in our worst days, there is the providence of God. God bless you, and may God keep you.
just want to take the moment tonight that if there's anybody who's listening, who's not a member of the body of Christ, who's not saved, who's not a Christian, I want to, 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 to inform you on how to become a Christian, how to, to be saved in accordance with the Holy Scriptures. First, one must hear the gospel of salvation, the facts that Jesus died, he was buried, that he rose again on the third day, Acts 15, 7, Romans 10, 17, believe that Hebrews 11 and 6, and believe that Jesus of Nazareth is the son of God and that he did rise again from the dead repent of one's sins and make God the priority of your life Luke 13 3 and 5 and also confess that Jesus Christ is the son of God Matthew 10 32 Romans 10 10 and also be buried in the liquid tomb of uh, baptism Acts 2 37 and 38 if you want to be baptized please feel free to reach out to us here at the church building Sugarland Church of Christ 281-561-0881 you can also find us online at www.slcoc.org and also for your convenience you can scan the QR code I think which hopefully will be on the screen uh, as we speak right now. And so you just scan that code and it'll take you to the applicable section of our website where you could fill out that response card. It'll be uh, generated to us and we'll make contact with you and see to it that you are baptized. God bless you. God keep you. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood would you or evil a victory win there's one wonderful power in the blood and there is power power wonder working power in the blood of the land and there is power power wonder working power in the From your passion and pride, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood, yes, and there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb, and there is power. Wow, Brother Walker, Brother Gerald Walker, what a magnificent job. We, we uh, The theme of this whole series is perceiving God's presence in perilous times. Brother Walker's message was God's providence in pearl, and he did a magnificent job in addressing this theme and topic. And, and Brother Walker, we just thank you so much, and we thank the saints of Sugar Land and, and everybody for tuning in with us this evening. Hope, trust, and pray that everybody was edified in the same manner that the saints here at Sugar Land and we're also edified. Please tune in tomorrow night. We'll have Brother Lamont Ross on the topic, God's Purpose in Pearl. These series of messages were put together to remind us that even in these perilous times that we're living in today, that God is still present. So thank you, Brother Walker, for reminding us of this, to, reminding us of this tonight. We hope, trust, and pray that our listening audience will tune in every single night of this virtual gospel revival. Thank you very much. Thank God for this opportunity we have to reach out to the world through social media. We thank you for Brother Jill Walker from the Maple Avenue Church of Christ. What a wonderful message he has brought to us this evening. Let us go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we're so thankful that you've given us this privilege, Father, to reach out through social media to preach the word tonight and we thank you for the message that was brought by brother Gerald Walker. We ask you father to continue to bless his life and bless his family. Father continue to bless his home congregation father. They continue to be strong in the word. Father we ask that you would bless the Sugarland Church of Christ and each and every member and each and every one father that's involved with carrying out your mission. We just ask father that you would guide us and provide us father the type of spirit that we may always be unified. Please forgive us of our sins, whether by word, thought, or deed. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I hold blessings and comfort are a part of my daily
Yeah.